Hi, guys, welcome back to my channel. Please share and subscribe my channel to get more interesting topic. Thanks. Hi, guys. Today, this today's discussion about the uh, PWHT stress living. So, I think 10 days gone, we didn't upload any video. Sorry, guys, because of the lots of pressure. Okay, no issue. The today's discussion about the PWHT living. What are the stress living? What are the uh, procedure? How to do stress live for a particular well -made? So, what are the process? Now, today we'll discuss. So, <coughs> what are the residual stress? So, we need to know first the residual stress. What is uh, what are the stresses or the residual stresses? What is telling? What is telling? Develop in the well meant mainly due to the stress strain provided by the stinker strain. So it is actually happened in the old main due to the restraint. If there is a restraint between, if you see after old main, if there is a sinkage will come, the sinkage strain will come. That strain, if there is a restraint by another things, they, that's called the residual stress. So develop in the well meant mainly due to the restraint provided to the sinker strain. In the thin material, if you go, the sinkage strain are accommodated by the distortion of the plate. If it is a thin material, the sinkage strain, if there is a sinkage strain will be uh, 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 occurred, then it will be happen to distortion of the plate. This accommodated by the distortion of the plate. However, the thicker section and the thin section clamp externally, the sinkage strain main paste themselves in the form of residual stress. So, if there is a weldment is going on, welding is going on, if there is external clamp it is there, that time the sinkage strain main paste themselves. It will be in the, that, that residual stress will be developed, but it, not, it will not be damaged the plate because there is an externally clamp is there. The residual stress will be developed, but it will be in the equal, equality in the whole plate because of the clamp. Since welding is a local melting, the local strain are unable to distort the thick section of material and therefore residual stress are created. If it, there is a thick material, if the welding is going on in the local melting point in the local area and the thick section, if it is the thick section that welding heat, it cannot go to the up to that point. So the distortion, its, it's strains are unable to distort so that, that strain, it cannot be unable to thick section. These residual stresses can reach a peak value close to the yield point of the material. Old yield point, what is yield point? It's the elastic is called elastic point. It goes to the elastic point. After that, it will be end the elastic and it will be comes to the plastic point, uh, plastic deformation at that point. Then the steel strain then by allowing element, the magnitude of crystal still are also high. So, this is the residual stress. What we have to know, the, what are the results of the basic knowledge. So we go to the next page. Preheating. So this is the very important for stress living, one important procedure. Preheating. Heating of the parent metal around the area to be welded before welding and holding the temperature until completion of welding. So what will happen if there is a heating of the parent metal around the area when you are doing welding then the stress will develop that stress it is the same temperature it is there in the outside area then the stress will not be developed if there is a stress develop it will be equal equality of the outside area so that the uh, your uh, material composition and the deformation will not be happened purpose why it is the purpose you see here to minimize the risk of cracking in the weld and heat affected zone of the steel so if there is a heating is there at the outside heating, the cracking will not be developed. And cracking means what what type of cracking is the hydrogen induced cracking or sometimes uh, cooling. If there is a cooling is not uh, properly uh, in the in the normal rate, then it will be cracking will become. So by reducing the rate of cooling, thereby reducing the formation of the hard martin site. So if the rate of cooling reducing we are reducing the rate of cooling so what will happen 
reducing the formation of the hard mutton side it will not happen if there is a hard mutton side will happen then it will be crack so reducing the rate of pulling therefore reducing the formation of hard mutton side this is the one reason second reason by allowing the hydrogen diffuse away from the weld and pressure rate so if there is a hydrogen is there by heating of the uh, parent metal outside the weld main though hydrogen will be diffused and the hydrogen cracking will not be occur by reducing the residual residual stress induced in the old region so residual stress can be occurred there but by the heating it also remove so make makes it easier to weld metal having high thermal conductivity like copper and aluminum reducing heat transfer rate reducing the distortion due to welding so preheating what is the purpose this is the main purpose of the preheating only minimizing the risk of cracking of the oil and the heat affected zone of steel makes it easier to weld metal having high thermal conductivity welding if it, it will be very easier if it is a copper and aluminum reducing heat transfer rate so heat transfer rate will be reduced reduce the distortion of the duo due to welding method how we will do method what are the method is there electric resistance and the by induction heater by oxyacetylene or oxypropone gas mixture with neutral time so six times thickness on both side of joint minimum 100 mm so six times thickness on both side of the joint minimum 100 mm and preheat up to 50 degree centigrade if ambient temperature is more than 10 degree centigrade if preheat temperature 50 degree centigrade is need if ambient is more than 10 the ambient temperature is the outside temperature is more than 10 degree centigrade the first heating what one is the preheating before the old welding and another is the first heating heat applied to the joint immediately after completion of the welding before the joint cool down to so the ambient temperature means it's also sudden cooling if the sudden cooling will be the crack will be generated so we need to apply the heat after finish the immediately welding purpose to ensure uniform temperature over the whole joint while cooling and allow low allow the hydrogen diffusion out of the element so it is the same case also hydrogen diffusion to allow the hydrogen diffusion of from the element to after the immediate heating after the finish after finish the welding it is the purpose Now PWHD one is preheating before welding, another is post heating after welding. Okay, now is the condition is the PWHD post weld heat treatment. So after welding, you are doing the post heating. Okay, now what is post weld heat treatment? This is after completion of welding. Okay, after finish the welding, this need heating the weldment at the control rate to temperature range specified. So we have to there is same also this is the control the cooling down okay heating the element we have to heat the element at a control rate to a temperature range specified means there is a control rate maybe it is 300 maybe 400 you have to keep this element until two hours after that you have to lower the temperature maybe another one hour you have to do like this way to control his temperature as a ambient temperature holding it at the temperature for certain time cooling it down at the control rate so this is the post oil heat treatment nature what is the mechanism by heating the oil zone the yield strength of the oil zone is lowest if the yield strength is the more what will happen then the plastic deformation will come maybe it will be cracked so yield strength of the oil zone is lower and the realization of the residual stresses occur by plastic flow combined with this small but real creep effect so carried out in furnaces it is carried out in the furnaces or by resistance by induction equipment temperature measurement by thermocouple fixed near the joint yes is the temperature measurement is there by thermocouple it is it is you have to round it thermocouple in the joint recording by temperature recorder instrument there is a temperature recorder recorder instrument is there we have to check the recording the temperature it is maintaining the uh, holding temperature how it is timing certain time thermocouple minimum we need for one up to six inch diameter one thermocouple need 
टू अप टू टेन इंच डाय टेन इंच डाय अप टू टू इंच टू नंबर रिक्वायर एंड द थ्री अप टू ट्वेल्व इंच डाय एंड अब ऑफ ट्वेल्व इंच डाय एंड अब ऑफ वीरेंट द थ्री थर्मोकपल दिस इज़ द मेकैनिज्म व्हाट इज़ द पार्पस सो व्हाई वे डूइंग द पार्पस सेम वे हैव टू मेंशन हियर टू अचीव टेम्परेचर ऑफ वेल्ड एंड हैज व्हिच इंप्रूव डक्टिलिटी एंड टार्पनेस एंड रिड्यूस हाज हार्डनेस द वेरी इंपोर्टेंट टेम्परेचर ऑफ द वेल्ड टेम्परिंग टेम्परिंग ऑफ द वेल्ड सो वेल्ड टेम्परिंग मींस वेल्ड क्वालिटी वेल्ड क्वालिटी विल बी वेरी हाई क्वालिटी हैज विथ इंप्रूव डक्टिलिटी डक्टिलिटी मींस इट विल इट विल सस्टेन द सम ऑफ द इंपैक्ट ओके डक्टाइल मटेरियल एंड टार्पनेस and reduce hard hardness so hard hardness reduce if it is hard hardness then material will be suddenly crack may be occur relieving the residual stresses to save level reducing the chance of permanent failure by brittle fracture fatigue or stress concern so relieving the residual stresses so residual stress it will be relieved it will be go to the not strain the, the certain strain will not come to so, relieving the residual stress level improving the mechanicality and dimensional stability after machining so if it is also very good the machining if you are doing machining there will be good machinability will be improved the method and dimensional it will not be affect anything for the cs piping preheat 50 degree centigrade if ambient temperature is less than 5 degree okay we need the 50 degree centigrade if ambient temperature 5 degree the preheat Post for 100 to 150 degree centigrade is need. If it is more than 25 mm thickness, preheat. We need 100 to 150 degree centigrade. Post it. 250 degree is required. If it is more than 30 mm for 30 minutes, we need for 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes. If it is more than 30 mm thickness, 250 degree centigrade. PWST required only when the thickness over 90 mm shall be heated at the rate of 200 to 350. 50 degree per hour cube per hour shall be held at soaking temperature 600 to 630 degree centigrade for one hour for every 25 cm thickness. So soaking temperature is a very temperature, very good, interesting things shall be held. It should soaking temperature shall be 600 to 630 degree centigrade. And we have to each 25 cm thickness we need to consume one hour. Cooling down, cool down to 400 centigrade at control rate. So you have to cool down the temperature to 400 degrees centigrade. If it is 600 centigrade, then 400 centigrade you have to put in the control rate. Then further cool down under insulation. Then you have to cool down. Then under insulation, insulation will be covered the old mate holding joint, and it should be cooled down under the normal condition. For carbon 0.5 molybdenum piping, if it is same. We heat 50 degree if ambient temperature less than 5 degree, so 50 degree 100 to 150 degree if thickness is 25. So first heat also 250 degree thickness if it is thickness more than 25 mm for 30 minutes. PWST mandatory when the thick is 19. So the same thing is mentioned also carbon and 0.5 molybdenum piping. For carbon molybdenum EF piping, okay, alloy steel. Then preheat required for all thickness. This is preheat required for all thickness. 200 degree centigrade. 200 degree centigrade for chromium less than 2 percent is 200 degree centigrade is required. If chromium more than 200 degree centigrade, it's need 250 degree centigrade preheat. In the first heat, if you see 300 to 350 degree for 30 minutes for T more than 20 mm if chromium equal to 2 percent. If T eat more than 12 mm if chromium 2 to 6 percent. T less than T more than 6 mm if chromium greater than 6 percent. What are the mandatory for thickness? Low, more than 30 mm. Okay, PWST is required. It for chromium molybdenum elastic piping shall be heated at a rate of 200 to 350 degree centigrade per hour. Shall be held at soaking temperature 670 to 730 per hour. So this is the things you have to remember at the time of when you are working at site. What are the preheat? What are the post heat? PWST. It is always mentioned in the ASME section. I tell you have can check ASME section nine for LTS. For LTS, I think you can see here. For 50 degree centigrade, if ambient is less than 5 degree, 100 to 150. If it is more than 25 mm, 
250 degrees centigrade if it is more than 30 mm for 30 minutes PWST required only when the design temperature of all the design temperature minus 29 to 35 then T more than 25 15 mm so required only so this is also same requirement so every material have the different requirement the PD preheat posted and PWST So classification of well joint discontinuity. So this type of discontinuity can can be can be uh, seen in this uh, in PWHD uh, post heat and preheat and what is happening in this maybe this type of uh, well joint discontinuity can be seen. Welding process related it is process related. We can see misalignment, undercut, uncavity, burn through, incomplete ventilation, lack of fusion, sinkage, arc strike, flag inclusion, tension inclusion. This is one of the, all of the defects. This is welding defect. This is a process related defect. And this is a metallurgical related. You see cracks of fissures, lot of cracks, cold and uh, delayed cracks, body heat stress, stress cracking, lamellar tanning, hydrogen induced cracking. So this is the John Manuel, the old John discontinuity. We are going to the next uh, one video that old John discontinuity will, will describe the misalignment if it is done, why it is happened. So we'll discuss in the next video. Hot cracking. In general, the common factor that promote cracking are microstructure, chemical composition, and rate of cooling. So, hot cracking, what is hot cracking? This is three factor is there. One is microstructure, one is chemical composition, one is rate of the crack initiated in a solidifying metal under the influence of low melting constitution like sulfur, P, V, and Se are terms are hot cracks. So, is this type of the phosphor one if it is there, crack in a solidifying metal. So it's if it is inside this metal is there, this it's solidifying the metal is very quickly. So the crack will be generated. So this is called this is crack initiated in solidifying metal. Second is occurs in the old main during solidification before the joint is fully formed. So in the it is occurs in the old main. Hot cracking occurs in the old main during solidification before the joint is fully formed. So before the joint is fully formed. In during that time solidification it's happened the solidification happened that's why hot cracking can be generated presence of manganese in excess quantity in base metal can prevent hot cracking so if it is presence is manganese more than then can be prevent the hot crack Cold cracking. What is cold cracking? Crack that occurs well made after completion of the solidification. Hot cracking so the during solidification. And the cracks that occur the well made after completion of the solidification of the steel are observed more predominantly in a low alloy steel. Cracks initiated in a well made under the combined influence of microstructure, hydrogen content, and residual stress are terms are cold cracks. So, if it is influenced by microstructure and hydrogen content and the residual stress, all will become to the cold cracks, which after welding it is happened. Also known by several names such as delayed cracking, hatch cracking, it's also called delayed cracking and hatch, it's also called the cold cracks. Cold cracks are observed in hedge in the well made. Always in the health in the old man, the cold crack will be can be prevented by preheating. Same thing, suitable welding technique. Welding technique should be suitable in which position it should be preheating, slow cooling the old man, post heating means it is post heating and reducing the external strength in the old joint. Stress relief cracking, also known as preheat pre cracking is observed in creep resistant steel containing high molybdenum vanadium, which vanadium which material have high molybdenum vanadium we have also known as the very heat cracking so heat cracking is observed there crack appears during the stress relief heat treatment given to the oil mint and the found in hedge so which time which time it this crack is will appear in the when the stress relieving is going on of the given the oil mint and the found in hedge Okay, it should be found in hedge. Stress relief cracking. Cracking is aggravated by the presence of high residual stress. Okay, high residual high stress concentration due to the notch induced by welding and high strength in the old man. The only solution of the mitigate this 
was treating and maintaining internal first temperature so how to solve this one you have to maintain the post treating for this test living cooking and maintain the internal first temperature is correct we have to maintain that temperature this is lamellar tanning non metallic inclusion like sulfur sulfides silicates it is present in the ignots igno ingots converts into lamellar inclusion parallel to the surface of the plate while rolling so this is the steel production defect when it is steel production at the time if there is a sulf sulfides and silicates is there inside the plate when the uh, lamination is going on that lamellar inclusion will become in the parallel of the surface of the plate that is called lamellar tearing during welding these defects generate cracks if it is plate inside this lamellar tearing is there lamellar defect sulfide silicate this type of metal is there so during welding these cracks will be generated proper joint design and can reduce lamellar tearing basically a defect in the manufacturing process and can do with the mitigator the only solution is ultrasonic testing before taking up the metal in the further processing so lamellar tearing so before that's why we have to ultimate or we have to do anything process for that particular any plates so we have to check the ultrasonic testing if there is a lamellar tearing defect is there or not hydrogen induced cracking quarks occurs under the bead or hedge caused by distortion of the hydrogen during welding dissolution dissolution of the hydrogen so when it is occur when it, it is occur in the hedge when it is hydrogen it dissolve in the during welding so this is called hydrogen induced cracking during welding at high temperature hydrogen fundamentally form electro coating dissolve into the old metal diffuse into the hydrogen ions and old metal so there is a coating in the electrode if there is a hydrogen is there so this also is diffuse in the hydrogen and base metal so it's called the induced hydrogen induced cracking during the cooling state of the oil mat the hydrogen tries to escape okay with further fall in temperature accumulated hydrogen returning to its molecular state thereby exerting enormous pressure this leads to failure by cracking low hydrogen electrode pre proper pre heating proper pre heating post heating can eliminate hydrogen cracking so which type of things we can reduce uh, the cracking hydrogen. low hydrogen electrode we have to use then hydrogen will be not be dissolved in the old metal proper pre heating if it is proper pre heating then hydrogen it will not be reduced the diffuse reduce, uh, hydrogen will not diffuse in the old metal the post heating the same thing So this is very important the carbon equivalent that's uh, the formula we are using the every word the c shall be preferable be less than 0 0.42 for obtaining a crack free oil joint if it is c is more than 0 0.42 then it is maybe crack will be generated so carbon equivalent is a very important role in the plate so it is less than it should be less than 0 0.442 now what are the we understanding now in heat treatment process adopted to improve one or more properties as required by the service condition of the steel structure machine component equipment pipeline so to improve the property heat treatment why you are using to improve the mechanical property as a good weldable weldability of well good quality of welding to relieve stresses and improve machinability first thing to improve mechanical property like strength hardness ductility soft resistance to improve why you are using heat treatment for this to modify the structure of the material to improve elastic and magnetic properties to improve resistance to heat corrosion to wear to its resistance how to resist with heat and corrosion in the way to change the grain size to change the grain size if it is change the grain size if it is a problem so it will be in the correct condition on the grain size in the print metal to stabilize the structure against dimensional changes should not be any if anything if there is a changes of dimension then it will be affect in your welding quality or in your future final product so that heat treatment we are using for stabilization of the structure against the dimensional changes annealing annealing is the one of the process in the steel still making heating the temperature below the recrystallization temperature what is the recrystallization temperature the range 760 to 970 degrees centigrade depending on element holding for long enough time to enable the internal changes take place and finally cooling slowly at a suitable rate in the furnace so 
finally we have to heating the temperature at the reconstruction temperature we have to heating this material and holding a long enough time to enable the internal changes take place and finally it will be cooling down at a furnace suitable rate reduce the hardness improve maintainability increase increase the ductility produce deserve microstructure to often deserve mechanical and physical property this is also stress relieving one of the process the annually and the normalizing same heating up to temperature this is the different recrystallization temperature above the recrystal this is annealing is the annealing what is this annealing you see below the recrystallization temperature if it is uh, normalizing it is above the recrystallization temperature keeping there for 15 minutes and cooling in open air so normalizing if keeping in the 15 so normalize the material to improve the maintainability improve the tensile strength and remove strains caused and the, there is if there is strain it will be removed by cold working process like hammering rolling or bending hardening what is the hardening hardening heating to temperature above the same is above the recrystallization temperature allowed to diminish the bullet period then cooling rapidly to temperature room temperature by quenching all is this is for stress living so increase what is happening in hardening if you do increase hardness will be increased metal will be good uh, quality stress strength increases wear resistance and what makes in the metal brittle what makes the metal hardening if it makes the metal will be brittle the tempering this tempering when a steel has been hardened it's very hard and brittle with high residual stress okay by tempering the metal gets softening if the tempering by after hardening the metal will be the brittle so remove the brittle the tempering is the metal gets softens it will be softens and improve toughness along the ductility this process involves reheating to temperature below critical temperature for a certain period and then cooling in steel here case hardening it is surface heat process that develops hard or resistant surface with a soft rough soft tough core there are five methods one is light hardening carburizing sanding indu uh, induction hardening and flame hardening so all these things this is a general process annealing then normalizing then hardening then tempering then case hardening all these things are the stress leaving process for the material good material quality we have to sound quality material after the welding okay thank you guys i think the stress leaving this subject is very low vast subject anyway you can and understand for this from beginning to end whatever i told and you can read one by one you can understand thank you so much for your patience to watch this video okay bye bye